Uh huh. Represent about three thousand of the wage in a hands-on work of building the ships. But you, right, were you not going to be the one for the testimony, or was someone else? Well, I can't speak for the company if that's what your question is. Okay. No. no. <laughs> Just you're going to talk about the um, you're going to speak about the South Korea Free Trade Agreement and the impact on on the jobs at BIW. Right. And I just want to start off by Can saying, come up to the mic, sir. Do we have a mic? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> we got all kinds. Uh, Daniel Dowling, I'm president of Local S Six of the IMAW, which is. I represent the, uh, the wage earners down at uh, Bath Iron Works who actually do the hands-on work of building the ships. And losing jobs is a very <laughs> real thing to uh, Bath Iron Works in general and my members in particular. Looking at all the people that work down there, just uh, if you look at the 49 days that we've gone through this year, if you look at what we've gone through for elimination of positions, we've lost six people every day, seven days a week so far this year. So the prospect of losing even more work to a free trade agreement with Korea is uh, not a welcome prospect. And there's been uh, an experience in the shipbuilding industry in general recently for the DDG 1000 program. Now whether it would have directly affected my members or not might be speculative. But there was a contract put out to uh, build what is known as modular sanitary units for the DDG 1000 program. And there was a number of American companies that bid on the contract. And one of them drastically underbid the others and of course got the contract. And shortly thereafter, all the work was subbed out to South Korea. Now that's what we have going on right now with the trade agreements that we currently have with South Korea. So it's happened already in America, and we'd hate to see it get worse. And add to that, that, and perhaps uh, many of you are already aware that there is an agreement between South Korea and North Korea where 120 South Korean companies, or mostly South Korean companies, employ up to 40,000 North Koreans who do the work of these South Korean companies. And in the end, the uh, leader of North Korea, who we all know is a dictator, rakes off about 60% of the wages that these North Koreans make. So, of course, it would be speculative if this Korean free trade agreement goes forward, how much of America's work is going to be lost to the Koreans in general and the North Koreans in particular. I don't think it's a good deal for Maine, America, or any of the workers in this state and the potential to lose jobs is bad enough but the prospect of having defense dollars, tax dollars spent in North Korea and funding someone who's our stated enemy is uh, just as proverbial salt into the wound. And our experience with free trade agreements hasn't been the best. We've all heard in NAFTA it's been around for a long time. Now, perhaps it's debatable to some people as to whether that's been a success or a failure. From the point of view of labor, it's been a real bad deal. And it's, it's got more than a decade now of experience. And going down the road, the same road with Korea, we don't see as being a good deal. So we just want to make you aware that that we don't support the idea of a free trade agreement with Korea. It's just not a good deal. Joe? Joe, sorry. Dan, you don't feel that the Pentagon owes it to the taxpayers to find the lowest cost provider for our defense needs? I believe that the Pentagon should certainly look at uh, low bid. I don't believe that's all what they should look at because there's certainly an issue of quality. And in the, uh, the items that I've talked about today, which uh, are now sitting in the uh, facilities of Bath Iron Works, are of very low quality. So there will be some measure of, it's speculative, but there will be some measure of uh, rework done to get them up to uh, being usable. 